Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Woke up this morning, got the fire going, did a lot of outdoor work, so I still have the cap on. If it gets too hot, I'll take the cap off. But I want to do Psalms 130, by the fire. Declan's sitting over there. But get out your King James Bible, God's perfect written word in English, and please follow along. Okay. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Out of the depths have I cried. There's coming a day, there's coming a day, I love that song. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more tears to dim the eye. There's going to come a day, the Bible talks about, where God's going to wipe away all tears. But right now, that day ain't today. We're looking for that day, but that day ain't today. So what do we do? We cry out to God. Okay? Let your request be made known unto God, the Bible says. When you're praying, let your request be made known unto God. Pour out your heart to the Lord in prayer. The Bible says we're to pray without ceasing. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. In this dark, wicked world, how we're vexed by this world, how we're vexed by our own body, wicked body of flesh, our struggles with our flesh, our struggles with this world, the vexation of the world. The Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil, put no wicked thing before thine eyes. But this is Christ, you know as well as I do, it's hard to leave the house and go, go get some groceries, get some clothing, get some stuff to fix the house, stuff you need around the house. It's hard to live this, leave this house and go into this world without wickedness being before your eyes. We're so vexed by this wicked world. And we cry out, Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Remember, what, we're reading uh, Psalms 130, but remember what King David said. If I hold iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. What's the number one reason that we say, Lord, hear us, please hear me? You come to Him humble, you come to Him broken, with a broken and contrite spirit. You throw your, your iniquities at the foot of the cross for salvation, and you continue to throw your iniquities before the Lord Jesus Christ. But when you hold that sin in your heart, I ain't letting it go. I don't really see a problem with this. I love my way versus God's way. Your worldliness, you hold that in. You know, the Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Be not conformed to this world. Okay. We talked about that. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. Okay. When you start holding sin in your heart and worldliness, basically going against the Word of God, and then you come to God saying, well, I've got this request over here, or I've got this request over here. God will not hear your prayer if you're holding iniquity in your heart. You've got to let it go. But here you see, King, here you see, Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Once men, again, the Bible says, let your request be made known unto God in prayer. Pray without ceasing. Who's the first person you go to when things... Well, when um, dirt hits the fan, what's the first thing? Who's, who do you go to first? Do you tell yourself, well, I can handle it, I can do it in my own strength? Do you run to the, to the world as the solution? Do you run to organized religion? Or do you take your request to God one on one? Be attentive to my voice of my supplication. Verse 3, if thou, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They have altogether become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And after salvation, God's going to sanctify your life. He's going to clean up your life. But we are saved sinners. We're not sinlessly perfect. We're saved sinners. We still struggle with this wicked body of flesh. If thou, should, if thou Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? Nobody. But here's the thing, the next verse. But there's forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. We talked about that. Being in Christ Jesus, someone who's truly saved and born again, being in Christ Jesus, God has made unto us wisdom, Righteousness, sanctification, redemption. Wisdom. What's the beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. What's the end of wisdom? Keeping His commandments. You fear God. If 
you fail to keep His commandments, you come to Him broken in repentance. And the Bible says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. He'll forgive us. We come to Him broken. Repentance starts at salvation. It's repentance and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. After salvation, it's repent, forsake, and get your heart right with the Lord and get back to living for the Lord. Anytime you stumble and fall to the right, you fall to the left, you fall down flat on your face, God will get you back up. You come to Him in true biblical repentance, having sorrow in your heart for that sin, and you throw it at the foot of Jesus Christ and say, Lord, get it out of my, help me get it out of my life. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Okay. But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. Why do you fear God? Because it helps humble you. It helps put you in the right state of mind. Remember John in Revelation. John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face as if he was dead. It humbles someone. It gets them to their knees. And that's where we belong. I got that sign that's just above here that says, when life gets too hard, kneel. And it says a big, big word right across it, prayer. When life gets too hard, fall on your knees before the Lord in prayer. Mm -hmm. But it starts with fearing God. I go back to my question, who do you go to first? If something in your life doesn't go right, who do you go to first? If there's something that you need, who do you go to? If there's something you just want, it's not a need, it's just a want. Who do you go to first? But it's just Christ, you need to start learning to go to Jesus Christ first. Prayer. Always take it to the Lord in prayer. I tell brethren, start your day with the Word of God, end your day with the Word of God, but also start your day with prayer and end your day with prayer. When you end your day, I talk to the Lord about my whole day. When I talk to the Lord in prayer at the end of the day, I talk to Him about and thank God for everything He did for me, give God glory in all things, thank Him for all things. I make my request for the next day, saying, okay, I'd like to do this tomorrow, Lord, if it be Thy will, this is my request. I give Him my request. In the morning, I give Him a request again for the day. This is our plan for the day. But you always take everything to God in prayer. Okay. Verse 5, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in His word do I hope. His word do I hope. We've got to be hiding God's word in our heart and living it. But let's start at the beginning here. I wait for the Lord. Patience. How many of us need a lot of patience? And these last days, I see, brethren, that one of the reasons why they tend to make a lot of mistakes is because they're running 100 miles an hour. They're hardly going anywhere, but they're running 100 miles an hour, and they keep running into walls, dead ends. But I'm running 100 miles an hour. You need to be patient. Wait for the Lord. And there's a lot of verses on that. Wait on the Lord. Be patient. Trust the Lord. He knows what He's doing. My soul doth wait, and in His word do I hope. Prayer and reading the word of God. It needs to be a daily activity. Remember the Bible says pray without ceasing, but you need to spend time in God's word. Sometimes you can pray. There's times I've caught myself praying against God's word and not realizing it. Lord, why won't you do this? I want this, Lord. Why won't you do this? Why won't you do this? And God, and you start reading, you read prophecy. God said this will happen in the last days. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. Because one of the big things I pray for, brothers and sisters Christ, every day, is that is there something, some good, a big event that could bring the body of Christ together, or is the catching away the only big event we have left to look forward to that's going to bring the body of Christ together, that blessed hope, the day of Christ. Is that the only event? Or is there not anything that can be done that can really unite the brethren because we're so scattered, we're so divided? And I was like, come on, Lord, why would you allow this to happen? And then you start reading the Bible, it says in the last days that there would be a falling away. God said, this is going to happen. So when you pray for it not to happen, are you praying against God? Yeah. What do I do? I pray for the brethren through this time period. I start praying, saying, Lord, help brethren to stand. And those that have fallen, 
help them to get back up into a standing position. And I just pray. But you've got to be careful. There's times where you can be praying against God because you're not waiting on the Lord. God's got a plan. Trust God. He knows what He's doing. You look out in this world and you start praying against things that are going on in this world, but God's Word prophesied if they turn their back on God, which this nation, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in America, this nation has turned its back on capital G God, the real Jesus Christ of the King James Bible, God and His perfect written Word being the final authority. They've turned their back on all that. They prefer their uh, lowercase g gods here in America. They prefer the Antichrist, the, the counterfeit Jesus, and they prefer themselves being the final authority. They don't want God to be the final authority. They hate God's Word. They like all these Bible perversions where it's not really God's Word, it's just you know their guidelines and you get to be the final authority. They love that. But they hate the idea of a perfect written word where God's the final authority. And the Bible says, if you read through the Bible, God has a plan. He says, if, if the nation gets like that, what's going to happen? We can't pray that God turns this nation around. We've got to pray that we can get as many souls saved as we possibly can before this country gets ran into the ground by the lost world, by the lowercase g God of this world. There's times where you can pray against God when God's not for something. Well, God, I want to live this way. I want to do this. I want to do that. No. God's like, that's not what I want for you. And you got people that get impatient and do it anyway. I want to live this way. I want a wife and kids. I want a husband and kids. I, I'm speaking from experience where you jump the gun, as they say. You don't wait on the Lord. You say, Lord, I, I'm doing it anyway. I got this, Lord. You just sit over there. I got this. Is that you? Brother says Christ. Like I said, in these last days, it's so hard to be... It seems like patience is a, something we desperately need to be praying for for everyone. Especially this guy right here. Patience. Waiting on the Lord. Being content with what God has for you. It might not be what you wanted, like for men in ministry. It might not be exactly what you wanted, but be content with what God has for you. Trust the Lord. Right. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait. And his, and his word do I hope. We're going to get back to that. The soul doth wait. What is our soul waiting for? The redemption of the purchased possession. Let's keep going. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch the morning. What's the morning? The next day. You're, a lot of people get distracted by looking for the next day instead of dealing with today. Brothers and sisters Christ, we're supposed to be watchful. Absolutely. We're to watch. But we're supposed to be living in today. God will take care. I don't know if you can see my hand. God will take care of tomorrow. God will take care of tomorrow. We're to live for today. We're to deal with today. Like I said, I pray to God and talk about tomorrow. Like, I want to do this, Lord. Can we do that? There's nothing wrong with that. But we need to live for today and let God take care of tomorrow. And what I mean by that is we look out in the world and we see everything that's going on in the world. All the fear-mongering. All them fighting amongst themselves over fleshly, worldly things. Sinful, wicked things. And they're just slaughtering each other and killing each other. And we're sitting there and watching that and we start getting fearful. And we don't trust God. We start thinking, well, we got to step up and we've got to take the reins. And we got to do this. We gotta start prepping. We gotta we gotta fight. We gotta pick up swords and fight and stuff like that. And it's like, a brother in Christ, my soul waiteth on the Lord more than they that watch the morning. A brother in Christ had a good story. He said he worked as a cook in a train on a train, and he wasn't behind the reins. He wasn't driving the train. He was a cook on the train. So the train was going whatever direction it was gonna go. He, it was a job. He said he's getting paid for. And there was times where the train would jerk to the right or jerk to the left and made his work a lot harder, but he had to work through it. And wherever it went is wherever it went. And he used that as an analogy that as brothers and sisters of Christ, as, as the body of Christ, we're to live for Jesus Christ to be a living witness and a verbal witness, preaching the gospel and living a life of Christ that would open people's eyes to, hey, 
This is what the gospel leads to? Because you're obeying the gospel to change life? Sanctification, looking for that blessed hope with the life that you're living every day? Giving God glory in all things? Giving Him thanks in all things? Being ready to give an answer of the hope that is in you? Being a living witness and a verbal witness? That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's our job. We're, God's in charge of everything, and we're along for the ride. And some of us are forgetting that. We're, no, we're not trusting God. My soul waiteth for the Lord. Looking for that blessed hope with the day-to-day -day life that we're living. And make sure you're living for Jesus Christ. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. In other words, a lot of people get distracted by tomorrow and they're not waiting for the Lord. They're not looking for Jesus Christ. They start looking at the world. There's a lot of brethren today that I believe are saved that, once true, that, that verbally believe in the day of Christ, the catch away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, but with the life that they're living, they're acting like they're post and mid-trip. Their focus isn't on hiding God's word in their heart and living it and preaching the gospel, being a living witness and a verbal witness. No, that's not their focus anymore. Their focus is they've got to run to the hills to hide. They've got to stock up. They've got to be preppers. That's not what we're supposed to be doing, brothers and sisters Christ. We're supposed to be living the life of Christ. You can prep a little bit, but our job, don't lose focus on your, what you're supposed to do. Preaching the gospel. Are you gospel tracting everywhere you go? In these last days, laying gospel tracts everywhere you go, that's something you can do, brothers and sisters Christ. Be ready to give an answer to the hope that's in you. When doors open, do you preach the gospel? Every opportunity you give God the glory, privately giving God the glory, so it's not you're not putting on a show, but when you do it in public, you do it also in private. When no one's around, you still do it. So it's not like you're putting on a show when you give God glory when someone's around, give God thanks when someone's around. You do it when nobody's around. It's just you and the Lord. You do it all the time. Mm -hmm. There's so much that you need to be doing for the Lord, and the brethren aren't doing it. They're getting distracted by the world. Mm -hmm. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning. He says it twice. I'm looking for Jesus Christ every day. And you have brethren looking at the world, and they're actually looking for the mark of the beast system. They're looking to see who's going to be the, the man of sin, the son of perdition. They're looking to see who's the false prophet. They're looking for the one world order. They're looking around for the one world religion. They're looking for the time of Jacob's trouble. They're not looking for that blessed hope. They're not looking for Jesus Christ. More than the morning. Some get so distracted. i got a plan for, for years down the road, and i got a plan for the... Trust the Lord. Live for Him today and trust the Lord for tomorrow. God will take care of it. God will take care of it. Let's keep reading. Let Israel hope in the Lord. Is your hope in your own strength? You're prepping? You're running, leaving the cities and fleeing to the countryside or out in the boonies? Is that what you're trusting? Is that where your hope is? Or is your hope in the Lord? Now, God can call you to leave one city and move on to another. Hey, I've done the best I can. Nobody wants the Lord. I've brushed the dust off my feet. You read about that in the, in the Gospels. The, the, he told the apostles, this is for the kingdom of heaven, though. But the instruction righteous is there. When you're preaching the truth to somebody and somebody doesn't want the truth, dust, brush the dust off your feet and move on to the next city. There might be times where God does call you to move. But the reason you're moving is so you can go somewhere new to start preaching the gospel and preaching truth and being a living witness. You don't move because, oh, you know, you're so fearful of your life and everything, you're not willing to give your life for Jesus Christ. I don't want to go off on that too much, but it seems like, I've, t I've said this before, I think it's both now. There's times where I believe that living for Jesus Christ is a lot harder than dying for Jesus Christ. I think it's easy. For some of us, it's like it's easy for us to die. I'll die for Jesus Christ. Haul me out there, uh, 20, uh, 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 people pull out guns and then shoot me. Next One moment I'm preaching the gospel to them, trying to you know, pour my heart out to them. The next moment I open my eyes and I'm in heaven with my Lord and Savior. For some of us, dying for Jesus Christ isn't hard. It's living for Jesus Christ that's hard. But for some of you, dying for Jesus Christ is hard. When it actually comes to it, you start running from it. 
You don't, you're not willing to put your life on the line for the gospel and for his word and living a life of Christ. You start getting mixed up in the world. And you start running. If I have to die, I have to die. Brothers of Christ, if we have to die for the gospel and for his word, we do. Let Ezra hope be in the Lord. Not in my own strength. Not in this nation, this godless nation, this God-hating Jesus, the actual Jesus Christ hating, God's perfect written word hating country, but in the Lord, in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is God the Father, manifest in the flesh, He's got everything under control. There's nothing happening that He's looking at and going, oops, I didn't want that to happen. How did that happen? Who did that? Who did that? Jesus is not up there, God Almighty, manifest in the flesh. He's, God's not up there going, I didn't want that to happen. This is let Israel's hope be in the Lord, but remember, we're adopted in. Now salvation's gone out in the world. That's why it's called the time of the Gentiles. Salvation's gone out to the world. Okay. Let the body of Christ hope in the Lord. Is your hope in the Lord, or is your hope in your own strength, or your ability to turn things around and fight with the, lost, the rest of the lost world here in America, or in your own country? Or are you sitting there, biding your time by preaching the Word of God whenever possible, living a life of Christ, preaching the Gospel when doors are opening, and you're keeping your eyes on that blessed hope? The day that God will call us home in death or in life. I always say that, death, I could die before the catching away. God could call me home. God could call you home before the catching away. He calls us home in life, or He calls us home in death. But we're to live for the Lord up to that last moment. You don't put God to the side and so you can start, you know, getting fearful with this, this wicked world. It's always going to be falling apart. It's always going to be going the wrong direction. We need to focus on our walk with the day-to-day -day walk with the Lord and make sure we're going in the right direction. Looking for that blessed hope. There's an old hymn that says, Climbing high mountains, trying to make my way home. Has to do with uh, the Jews wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, climbing high mountains, trying to get to the promised land. Brother says Christ, we're climbing high mountains, trying to get home. If you look at that, there's one more mountain. Okay, there's one more mountain. You climb that mountain. There's another mountain to climb. Okay, there's another. We're climbing high mountains, and our goal is that blessed hope. Our home is up there. It's not down here. It's up there. But there's some brethren forgetting that, and they're trying to make their home down here. My home is not down here. This is a blessing that God gave me, but my home is not down here. My home is up there. I'm making my way home. I'm looking for that blessed hope. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with Him is plenteous redemption. Remember we talked about the redemption of the purchased possession. There's going to come a day. Right? There will be no sorrow. You know that song? No trials, no parting over there. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shores. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look into his face and I see his grace. And he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. That's what we're living for. When you're looking for that blessed hope, we're living for that day. We're climbing high mountains. We're doing the work of the Lord. He's running the train and the train's climbing high mountains and we're just here to do the work of the Lord. No matter how hard it gets, that's why the Bible says preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, no matter how hard it gets, we're to continue preaching the Word of God and living by it. Hiding in our hearts and living it. With Him is plenteous redemption. We are sealed, the Bible says we are sealed for the body of Christ. We are sealed, this is the only time period that this is, we are sealed into the day of redemption. We're looking for that day of redemption. I still struggle with this flesh. I still struggle with the world. I still get into battles with Satan. That's why the Bible says put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. And the wild, stand against the wiles of the devil. 
not having done all to stand, put on the whole armor of God. I struggle with all three of the enemies. All the time. But I'm looking for that blessed hope. That's why I struggle with them, because I'm living for that blessed hope. There's going to come a day where we're going to be redeemed. Fully redeemed. We're going to get a new body. We're going to get up there in the flesh, the world, and Satan can no longer get in the way. And that mind of Christ that we, could, that we can have a lot down here with the Holy Spirit open the scriptures, we're really going to have that mind of Christ when we get up there. No more division. We're all going to be one body. You know, I was talking to a brother in Christ. The Bible says we're supposed to be of the same mind and of the same judgment, striving together. Is that what's going on today? When we go to heaven, that blessed hope, is it going to happen? Absolutely. Are we supposed to strive for it today, living to try to live right today? Absolutely. But it's definitely going to happen when we go to heaven. Here's verse 8. And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. We talk about this a lot, brothers and sisters of Christ. When you get saved, the, 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 the ultimate cost of sin... Hell, the, the law of sin and death, going to hell and burning for all eternity, that gets paid for. Your sins are forgiven when it comes to that. But now your life as a Christian, oh, I can sin all I want, I can sin all I want, it's not a big deal. You're still going to have to answer for your life as a Christian at the judgment seat of Christ. And your works are going to be thrown on the fire, and the bad works, the sin, the wickedness, the going the world's way, being distracted by the world, being distracted by the flesh, failing to put on the whole armor of God so you can stand against the wiles of the devil, you know, when you fail to fight against Satan, it's going to show. You're still going to be held accountable to it. Okay? And I always tell brethren, how you live, how you live, I look at it as the rewards we get, do we actually need money in heaven? So what are, I believe the rewards are how we get to serve God for all eternity. How we get to live for eternity. How do you want to spend eternity? Here's your penny. You barely made it in with the, with the, you know, you barely made it in. But remember the Bible says, if you suffer with him, you shall also reign with him. But you can't come down with Jesus Christ to rule and reign for a thousand years. You didn't earn that reward. I want to go wherever Jesus goes. I want to serve God wherever He want, needs me, wants me. He doesn't need me. Wherever He wants me to serve Him, I want to be able to do it. Okay? The reward's in heaven. We're going to have to answer for our life as a Christian. That's why Paul said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. The salvation he's talking about is not eternal salvation. He's talking about looking for that blessed hope when you have to stand before your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the judgment seat of Christ. Your salvation down here how you're living down here. Work it out. Work it out. Mm -hmm. So we're going to end that there. And, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. There's coming a day, brother, says Christ, that blessed hope. Are you living for it? Are you looking for it? Are you getting distracted by the world? Are you trusting God? Are you taking your... Are you, are you, do you have a strong prayer life? Are you taking your requests? Your struggles? Your doubts, your fears. We're not given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Are you taking everything to the Lord in prayer? Are you staying focused on what matters? Are you getting distracted by the world? So I'm going to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.